it's extremely common to want to have many values in just one place. For example, the days of the week, a list of students in a class, the population for a town over the last hundred years, and countless other examples. In Swift, we do this with an array, which is its own type of data, like strings, integers, booleans, and doubles. But they're special, because they can hold multiple other values inside it. It might hold one string, or two strings, three strings, five strings, five million strings, or perhaps even no strings at all. It could be an empty array and it'll automatically adapt itself to hold enough space for the items you want to do. Let's look at some examples of arrays here. First up, we could say our new array called Beatles, storing John, Paul, George, and Ringo. Notice the square brackets start and end the array, with commas in between each item. We could say I want an array of numbers, storing 4, 8, 15, 16, 23, 42. Or an array of temperatures, 25.3, 28.2, and 26.4. Now this code here creates three very different kinds of arrays. This first one is an array of strings, whole people's names. One uh, below holds integers, just pure whole numbers. The last one is an array of decimals or doubles. Now, when it comes to reading values out of the array, we ask for them by the position they appear in the array. This is called their index. For example, we could say an array of A, B, C, and D. If you want item A or B or C or D, we provide the integer index. But this bit confuses beginners. We start counting at zero, not at one. So if I wanted to read A from the array, I would ask for zero. B is 1, C is 2, and D is 3. And so we could read some values out of our arrays. We could say, give me beetle 0, the first beetle, that'll be John. Give me numbers 1, the second number. Or temperatures 2, give me the third temperature. And you want to make sure always that an index you asked for actually exists inside the array. Otherwise, your code will just crash. Bang, back to the home screen with a confused looking user at the end. Now, if your array is variable, you can modify it after creating it. For example, here's our Beatles array, John, Paul, George, and Ringo. I could say, my friend Adrian always wanted to be a singer. Let's put him in the array too. I'm going to append him to the array by saying Beatles.append Adrian. And I'll put Adrian on the end of the array, so it becomes John, Paul, George, Ringo, Adrian. And there's nothing wrong with you adding items more than once. I could say, append Alan, append Adrian again, append Naval, append Vivian. It's down to you. It'll just keep on growing the array longer and longer and longer. However, Swift does watch for and care about the kind of data you add, and it'll make sure your array only holds one kind of data at any given time. As a result, this kind of code is not allowed. Here's our temperatures array again. It's an array of decimals and array of doubles. If I say to this, append Chris, Swift will complain loudly. You cannot put a string into an array of decimals. It won't work. This is also true when it comes to reading values out of the array. Swift knows our Beatles array is an array of strings. So if I read one Beatle out of there, it's got to be a string. It has to be. It's an array of strings. One of them is a string. Our numbers are arrays an array of numbers, integers. If I read one value out of there, it'll be an integer. You'll always get an integer. And Swift will not let you mix these different types together. Come on, I see you're hungry. Never get treats, apparently. Oh, you're pushing me out of the way, dogs. Cheeky dogs. Come on. Quick, they're waiting. Good dogs. And so this kind of code is not allowed. I can't say, give me the first beetle and give me the first number and use plus to add them together. That's not possible. You can use plus with two strings, or plus with two integers, or plus with two doubles, but not a string and an integer. Not possible. This kind of code, again, will not build. This is called type safety. Just like how Swift won't let you mix integers and decimals, or strings and decimals and similar, except now it's a deeper level. Yes, beetles and numbers are both arrays, but they are specialized arrays. 
One is an array of strings, one is an array of integers, and they can't be mixed. You can see this more clearly in code when you want to start with an empty array and add items to it one by one. I could say uh, var scores is an array of int, scores append 100, scores append 80, scores append 85, and then print scores 1. Now, I've covered the last four of these lines of code before. It's old stuff. But this first line here shows how we have a specialized array. It's not just any kind of array. It's an array that holds specifically integers. And we write this inside this less than and greater than symbol, commonly known as angle brackets, although some folks like me often call them Pulp Fiction brackets because of the famous John Travolta dancing scene in Pulp Fiction, um, but the angle brackets to most folks. We're saying this thing here must hold integers. And so Swift knows for sure, you know, Beatles must hold strings. Scores must hold integers. If I read the first Beatle, it's going to be a string. If I read the first number, it's going to be a uh, first score, sorry, it's got to be an integer. And it stops us adding integers to a string array or a string to an integer array and similar. And you'll also notice this open and close parenthesis here. Uh, they exist because it's possible to customize the way you create the array. For example, you might say, um, give me an array of integers, but I want to have a thousand example integers to start me off, each with a value of zero. And I'll change them later, but give me a thousand zeros to start with. That kind of thing you put inside there to customize the way the integer array is created. You can, if you want to, make different kinds of arrays by specializing in different ways. We could have said uh, albums is a new array specialized to hold. What are you doing, you horror show? I love you too. You're a good dog. To hold strings. So only strings go in there now. And when you type albums out and press append, you're going to see here Xcode telling me you append a string to this thing and nothing else. So I'll append. Let's do uh, folklore. Let's do albums append fearless and albums append red. Three example albums. Well, we said this must contain strings. So we can't try and put integers, doubles, booleans, whatever you want to. They can't go in there. It's got to be strings. Now, arrays are so common in Swift, there's a special shorthand way to refer to them. Rather than writing array string here with the angle brackets, we can instead write a square bracket and string like that. Imagine like a little little box holding strings inside. It's a nice visual metaphor for what this thing looks like. Otherwise, it works the same. So, you know, string like this or oops, like this means exactly the same thing. One's just shorter because it is so common. Now remember, uh, Swift's type safety means it must always know what type of data an array is storing. That's its job. That might mean being explicit. We are holding an array of strings, or using the longer version, an array of strings. But if you provide an initial value, Swift can figure it out for itself. I could have said, album is an array holding just folklore. So I'm assigning an array of one string to albums, and therefore albums must be an array of strings. Swift can just figure it out for itself. Now, before I'm done, I want to mention a few pieces of useful functionality that come with arrays. First, you can, if you want to, use count to read how many items are in the array, just like the with strings. I could say print albums.count, and there are, of course, three in there, so you'll get three printed out. Second, you can remove items from the array either by calling remove at to remove one item based on its index in the array or remove all to clear the array completely. And so we could say uh, var characters is an array of, let's do Lana, Pam, Ray, and Sterling here. And if I print out uh, characters.count, put that on my clipboard actually, 
print characters dot count, and then uh, let's do characters dot remove at two. That's a third item. Remember, so zero is Lana, one is Pam, two is Ray. So we're removing Ray from the array. I'll then print characters count again, and then I'll say finally characters dot remove all, and print characters dot count again, and it's going to print out four, then three and then zero. So it's going down as we remove items. Third, you can check whether one array contains a particular item already, particular string, particular number, particular whatever, by using contains like this. Let Bond movies be an array of Casino Royale. Let's do Spectre and then end with uh, No Time to Die. And I'll do print Bond movies dot contains that well-known Daniel Craig movie, Frozen. <laughs> does does the array of uh, contain uh, Frozen? Or the answer is false. It does not contain that. Uh, there's not much Anna and Elsa in MI5 or MI6. And fourth, if you want to, you can sort an array by using sorted. I could say uh, let cities equals an array of uh, London, Tokyo, Rome, and Let's do one more, Budapest, and then print cities.sorted. This thing returns a new array with its items sorted. So the Budapest first, then London, then Rome, then Tokyo. Now for an array of strings, it means alphabetical, A to Z, or A to Z. But for integers, it'll do it numerically. So zero before one, before two, before three, up to you know billions in the high, high numbers. Finally, you can reverse arrays by calling reversed on it. It's particularly interesting in Swift, as you'll see. If I have an array of strings here, I'll make this one called presidents be equal to uh, Bush, then Obama, then Trump, and then Biden. And I say let reverse presidents be equal to presidents dot reversed. Swift is really sneaky here. If I print out uh, reversed presidents, you won't see Biden, Trump, Obama, Bush. Let's print it out and you'll see. Boom. Um, so you can see what it's got down here at the very bottom is uh, it's got a new type called a reversed collection of arrays storing Bush, Obama, Trump, and Biden. So what's happened is it's kept the original array intact inside, but it remembers to itself this is reversed. So when you ask for items, you know, go over every item and do something with them, for example, um, it will, at that point, do the reversing. It's an optimization. It doesn't literally rearrange all the items, because that would be very, very slow if you had a, a million strings, for example. It's much faster to say, yep, it's reversed, trust me, it's fine, and then go backwards over it later on. Anyway, arrays are extremely common in Swift, and you're going to have lots of opportunity to learn more about them as you progress. Even better, things like sorted, reversed, count and more lots of other of these pieces of functionality exist elsewhere in strings for example you could use sorted to rearrange the characters in the string into a different order uh, and take a string like swift for example it rearrange it so f came first then i s t w so it's a great way to learn something once and apply it in many places all right dogs come on You've been good dogs, you're very patient. Come on, come on. You're good dogs, you are good dogs. Slightly noisy dogs, mind you. I'm trying to work. <laughs> I'm trying to help people here. And you are woofing <laughs> and demanding treats. <sighs> Dear me.